Hi everyone, in this video we're going to go ahead and talk about labels, auto labeling, as well as uh, data loss prevention policies. As well, I'm going to give you a little bit of best practices and tips for your compliance uh, level for your company, depending on where you're going with the compliance, it's just some best practices as to what you should be implementing to better secure your environment. So without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, you want to head over to your compliance portal or known as Microsoft Preview. Once we're here, we're going to scroll down to solutions. Once we're here, we find information protection. If we open this, we get these options right under it. It's overview, labels, label policies, auto labeling. Uh, for now, in this video, we're going to focus on labels. And once we are in here, there's typically, if you are an E5 customer uh, for Microsoft, you typically will have a few labels automatically created for you. You wouldn't have to worry about creating them. But for now, uh, we have it empty, so we're going to go ahead and have to create our labels. And we're going to give it a friendly name. So this one, for example, would be HR. And the display name is going to be HR files. The label priority, typically, if it's something confidential and really important, you want to do it as highest. If it's something that is not super important, or maybe you're labeling something for a different department, you might want to consider medium or low. Descriptions for the users, this is a label policy for us to for tick i can't i can't type today our data that way your users know that you are just trying to implement some security uh, management for your data and files and they know that it's secure they're not kind of shocked by how this is going to be applied description for admins this is typically really good to kind of describe what this label is actually used for rather than just giving a hey this is just to protect our data this is more for a different admin to take over your uh, position or maybe even just kind of working with you on your team and assisting with this and you're out for the day or something they don't have to bother you they kind of exactly know what this label does so this label is going to flag hr files that way your other admin knows what label this is again we use a descriptive name which is great but a little bit of description goes a longer way so just choose a color for your label after that and just make sure that you filled out everything that does have a star because those are the ones that are required and go ahead and hit next. The scope here, we're going to actually just want to mainly do files and emails. Meetings is kind of a little bit different, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. I'm not going to get into it too much here. And once we're done with selecting this files and emails, uh, you can go ahead and look down below for groups and sites. Uh, th this option is grayed out. You can actually assign groups and sites to labels. Uh, but again, it's a little bit more advanced. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to kind of keep it simple and related to files and folders and kind of go ahead and hit next. And in this, I'm just going to want to control access, who can control access to view this label, as well as apply content marking, meaning that it will add a custom header, footer, and a watermark to our label. And once you check those, you can go ahead and hit next. Configuring access control settings, as I just chose, assign permissions now. Uh, let users assign permissions when they apply the label, meaning, for example, if it's an HR department, I will want my users to kind of be educated on, hey, can you go ahead and flag this file as confidential, as well as just let, for example, one of the HR people that are responsible to emailing the files out to the background check company be able to access this. That way, you reduce your overall digital footprint, as well as you just kind of ensure your security for your data as well as for your employees so because you don't want your employees to lose their social security numbers and then you have to go through and explain what happened it's not a good experience for you or your employees so kind of make sure that those type of files are always safe and secure make sure you always do it in outlook make sure you do it encrypt encrypt only meaning that if they're sending it out they have to encrypt it i would like my social security number to be encrypted when it's being sent out um again a lot of people don't do that but it's very good and it's uh, one of the best practices you can possibly follow for security measurement. And here we get an error here because this label is scoped for to both files and emails. You must also select in Word, PowerPoint and Excel prompt for users to specify the permissions. Looks like we might have missed it here and it's that checkbox right there. We can go ahead and hit next. Content marking. 
Again, we can actually do add it, add a watermark if we choose to, add a header. I am actually not going to do it. I just kind of wanted to show you this. Uh, this is something that real world people will use. For example, a company that's being sending out some data that is compliant, you would watermark your data. If it's certain draws from an architecture team, you would watermark it. A video with a watermark. Again, maybe an email with a little bit of a footer down there to say that this is confidential data and it's not supposed to be shared out. And again, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to configure it, but it's there for you, there for you to use. Please feel free to use it. It is a great tool to use. Next up is auto labeling for files and folders. So when we are configuring a label, we can actually configure it to auto label as well, as well as even configure an auto labeling policy afterwards. So for now, I'm actually going to go ahead and configure it here and it's going to auto label. It's going to ask us to simply add a condition meaning if this condition is met this label is being applied it is just like a exchange online mail flow rule just where if this happens then this so just keep it, keep it very simple again for this i'm actually gonna add a condition content contains and the default i'm actually just gonna keep it as default for now because there isn't much content on this tenant but again you can just simply choose one of your groups that you have and if you scroll down a bit, when the content matches these condition, automatically apply the label. And this is going to be the label that we do. The other option is recommend it to the user. So again, if you educated your users that they need to start using labels because we're going towards CUI compliance or any level of compliance that you might be going for with your organization, you might want to recommend the users to apply that label. Uh, if it's like some user that needs to kind of be able to apply it, assign a permission as well as email it out. If it's something such as an engineering department, I would automatically apply the label. I wouldn't wait for it. It's just kind of more neater. You don't have to put that stress on your users. If it's an HR department, a little bit different. Again, it's all going to be depending on the use case for that label and which department is going to be using it. Display this message to the users when the label is applied. It's actually a great tool to say, hey, this is a important file and we have assigned a label to it to further protect our data. This kind of will pop up on the user window. They get to see it and they get to say, oh, okay, this file is actually very important. It looks like there's a label that was assigned to it. You can kind of give it a warning. For example, if it's an engineering department, they're saving a file and the file gets detected to have social security numbers in it, or maybe even... Uh, some credit num credit card numbers in it. We just simply let them know, hey, this file has credit cards numbers. We apply the confidential label to it. Please feel free to remove the credit card numbers and update the label, or the label will automatically be updated once you remove those. And once that is done, we just simply go ahead and hit next. Please have at least one condition selected. Oh, I forgot. And we can do sensitivity info type. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and select uh, social security. Uh, looks like I can't find social security, so maybe a credit card number. Uh, um, for now, actually, an Azure storage account key is very important too. So if it is an Azure storage account key, which is one of your storage, make sure to mark it as highly confidential and apply this label that we just created. We go ahead and hit next. And in this section is where we were able to select which group is going to be defined to which site. Again, I'm not really applying it to a group or a site. I can't really do all the labeling currently for all my files because uh, this is mainly a test environment. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. Auto labeling. Uh, again, we already configured this. This is in preview. This is a, a different uh, method that Microsoft uses. It relies on Azure SQL and Azure Synapse to actually assign those. Again, if it has the word preview in it, that means it's in beta. I don't trust too many things that are in beta. If you're somebody that would like to test it, I personally like to test those type of things, so I will do it on a test tenant. But again, if you're somebody that is doing this in a production environment, please don't use a brand new feature. Let make sure you do your research before you use it. And we do go ahead and hit next. And now we just kind of get an overview of what we created. We kind of can review everything we did. We make sure to configure the auto labeling to automatic. It's files and folders. Word, Excel, PowerPoint is also included. Uh, files and emails is, as well as included. It is an HR file. And we just simply go ahead and create label. 
once the label is created here in just a moment, we should be able to see it. And the next steps here, Microsoft does provide it to you. Automatically apply label to sensitivity content, publish label to users apps, don't create a policy though yet yeah, again i'm just gonna actually just publish it out to the apps that way the users can start seeing it i'm not gonna automatically assign it just yet because you kind of want to roll it out in stages you don't want to roll out something in production right away it can break out things and it will cost you a lot and once we do that again now the auto labeling policy is being created here it's asking us to create it it's looking at all the different features and i'm actually just gonna go ahead and create this policy microsoft is kind of smart enough to know that hey you just created this you don't have an auto labeling policy and you can figure the auto labeling we go ahead and, and do an auto labeling policy for you and we just simply click on it and it's being submitted and if it does that that's completely fine that sometimes will have in it's in simulation mode you can click it a couple more times but if not you can just kind of close it out and kind of refresh your page and the policy will be there as well as your label will be there now that we created the label and we do have an auto labeling policy as well oh looks like microsoft did not create it for us in this case you can just simply hit create hit next and please fill out all the required fields actually i went too fast because it was still loading in this case it will be finance and i'm actually just gonna go ahead and look for pci data keep it the same Hit next, it's just validating everything. Admin units, I'm doing the full directory. Again, this is good for somebody that's having a hybrid environment setup. We're only using SharePoint online for this uh, demo here. So we go ahead and hit next. And the location, uh, I'm, again, I'm gonna do SharePoint sites, OneDrive accounts, exchange emails, and we're gonna go ahead and hit next. You can edit those if you want, but I'm keeping the scope to all users and all sites. and Microsoft just will validate it. Again, these portals will take a little bit of time for you as you're going through these steps. So don't rush it, kind of take your time. Again, you saw when I tried to rush it, I kind of get those pop-up errors on the screen. And in here, just gonna kind of look for credit card numbers. So just common default. I don't want to do advanced rules. You can do advanced rules. It gives you a lot more options, but I'm just gonna do the common rules and hit next. And again, we're looking for PCI data and we're gonna go ahead and hit next and in here is where we are able to choose our label that we just created and it says this label contains exchange specific actions it cannot be used for sharepoint or onedrive select another label or remove sharepoint on onedrive in this case actually i'm gonna go ahead and remove them so if you get back to the location you can just simply hit this and hit next 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 the label is there there's no problem now we're gonna go ahead and next and then here is where you automatically replace it or you automatically encrypt it pretty much. So I'm actually going to automatically replace existing labels with this one. Uh, the ones that have the same or lower priority, make sure to be replaced with the one that we created. Next, the policy type is to run in simulation mode. If you're doing this in production environment, I highly encourage you to do all your policies in simulation mode first to kind of see the reporting feature and kind of know what they will do before you kind of go ahead and release them out to the public. If you release something in production and it breaks everything, it will not be a fun day for you or your department. So please just make sure that when you're releasing something or roll out different features to kind of do it in simulation mode or do it in the most secure way, make sure you have your testing done. And that's about it for the policy. The overview, we kind of rolled down and it gives us an error that the label action not allowed for the content type, the schemes data, and that is the preview feature. I must have missed it somewhere. And if we go ahead and hit create again, um, give me one moment. Looks like I might have missed it earlier on when I was creating it. Uh, let's go ahead and go from the start here. The name can be the same. Admin units is the same. Oh, an E5 license is required to configure the admin units as well. This is worth mentioning. Uh, I'm currently running a business premium uh, license along with E5 mobility and security. Those are kind of the policies that you're going to want to stick with. Uh, the licenses are really expensive to get a full E5 license as well. It does, does not require you to uh, purchase any additional licenses to get all the security features. The mobility and security are very cheap uh, versus the E5 itself actually doesn't come even with teams and it's very expensive. So having a business premium with an E5 mobility and security 
I believe is the best route for this. And then here, actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the status, keep the label the same, apply it. And in here, it's okay. Looks like everything should be fine. Let's see if it allows us to create it. Still doesn't. I'm going to go ahead and actually cancel this one and go back to our label here just to kind of review if we have it configured on the label itself, which I do. And in this case, we can edit the label itself and simply just go next. And then here, we're just going to go ahead and uncheck it. So again, if you have it checked, you might run into problems when creating the auto labeling one. Again, this is a in beta feature. So you kind of want to keep in mind that it's not fully ready to be fully utilized. And we can just head back over here to create our auto labeling policy. Oh, I went too fast again. And again, I'm going to actually go ahead and look for PCI data. Keep it the same. Next. Next. And we're going to do it on exchange emails. So this will actually apply on some files and folders that are all going to be sent up from email. Keeping it as a common rules, PCI, again, data security is what we're looking for. Hit next, we're going to go ahead and choose our label that we created next. And then here, I'm going to automatically assign it next. And again, run it in simulation mode kind of review it and we go ahead and create the policy. Let's see if this time it will allow us to do. So just kind of wait here for it. Again, don't rush things, rushing things with Microsoft. This typically would just make you take longer. Um, just patience along the way is the best. And we get the policy now it's created. Go ahead and hit done. We're all set with this policy. A uh, couple of things here that is really worth mentioning is that once you have your labels configured for your compliance level, uh, you actually need to configure data loss prevention policies. Uh, and for data loss prevention policies, they work hand in hand with labeling. So you can actually configure a data loss prevention policy to kind of go through and force users not to share the files, force users not to be able to send the files out. And you kind of can see here, it kind of, it's all accounts, all SharePoint sites, and you can actually assign the different uh, labels inside of the data loss prevention policy. That way, you know, if the file has a confidential label, please go ahead and not let the users share it. And this is in simulation mode. Simulation mode is great because again, I wanted to show that in simulation modes, it will let you know what matches they found and whatnot. That way you can kind of tell if the policy is actually going to do anything in your production environment, or maybe you misconfigured the policy. In this case, I know that this policy is working. I just don't have any specific data in here to this environment just for the purpose of this video. So again, uh, if you configure it and you're in simulation mode to see the progress of simulation mode, you simply go to the policy that you configured and you'll be able to see the simulation progress. Another thing worth mentioning for data loss prevention policies are the priorities. The lower the priority, the, the higher it is actually. So the zero is the first policy that gets applied. One is the next in line, two is the next in line, so on and so forth. If you are creating a default policy for an important HR department, you might want to set the priority for it as zero and then apply a default policy from Microsoft afterwards kind of as a backup. But a lot of people typically set their custom policies priorities higher than the default one. That way you kind of get away from the default ones that are created by Microsoft. These are kind of some of the best practices that are recommended for your security and your compliance level. Uh, again, every compliance level of diff is different based on what configurations you will need to do. CUI compliance are going, is going to require you to go CMMC level two or level three. Those can be really hard to kind of get to. The sort of government level, you're working with the Department of Defense, DOD, so on and so forth. So you kind of want to make sure that when you're going with the level of compliancy, you review the configurations that you will need to make and then go ahead and make them. Uh, Microsoft for the Cloud Suite, they provide you your compliance uh, policies and procedures all inside of the Compliance Center. And once you're in the Compliance Center, you can configure all these different policies, run audit logs, create labels, assign the labels, um, create data loss prevention policy, as well as run content searches, meaning you can export out files and folders, emails, so on and so forth. But this is pretty much everything you will need to know about labels, data loss prevention policy, and a little bit of the best practices for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.